people that I want to reach in the community would be the whole community, but I guess that's not realistic. So I use the number 10,000 because that's like 1% of the community. Uh, 10% of, of our community. The money, I was a little more ambitious. I like, like 10, $10 million a day. I'm actually spending on that bar structure. And um, what I would like to do is to build a multi-service center for the people returning home from incarceration. Because like it or not, they're coming home. And they're coming back to the community of Richmond. And we have a choice to either accept them and help them <coughs> or be scared in our homes because of that. Um, how would you know if I accomplish this? The community will know because hopefully good news in Richmond will spread that things are getting better in Richmond. Uh, how recidivism will drop. Do you know what I mean? We, we arrest and re-arrest and re-arrest the exact same people. And, then, and it just has to stop because what we're doing now is not working. Um, is this realistic for me? Yes. Because being part of this, how did New Mexico drop issue of recidivism rate and not California? <coughs> Massachusetts, Connecticut. It is happening across the country. Uh, my self-interest to this, because I just recently returned home and couldn't come to the community that I grew up in and was born and raised in, I had to go to Alameda County. And my family is here, but you, I had to go to Alameda County. Um, because there is no services for people coming home. And just, I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but when I was sentenced, I was not given a life sentence. So the community of Richmond knew I was coming home. The judge, the police, everybody knew. One day, I was I would get off a bus at the park station, and that's why it's kind of personal to me because, to me, for a long time, well, I felt the community of Richmond didn't want me back, and I felt a lot of guilt behind that, really, because I I look at him and all these youngsters in this particular area I feel responsible for because in the 80s this was my stomping ground, and that's why I'm trying to change that. Um, and my vision for better Richmond, uh, for well, my vision for the future is to make Richmond safer. To make somebody like me, or somebody, because I know we've all either know somebody that's re-entering, we know a family member, a friend, a friend of a friend, or just something you see on the news. You ever notice they lead a story when something happened? Parole Lee did this. It's just not this guy committed this crime. We gotta let you know he was on parole. And it gives you the negative thought, but what if we try to help? I don't know. Um, to give all parolees a better chance. Do you know let's ban the box? Do you know in Massachusetts you cannot ask me, was I ever convicted of a felony? If you offer me the job. Then and once I tell you, if you then turn me down for the job, I can sue you. Because you can't discriminate. So you have to offer me the job first. And maybe to give one of these youngsters a chance, maybe if he sees me doing the right thing. I mean, he has his, you got these young rappers, they look up to Lil Wayne, you got all these. Why can't this youngster look up to me? Why can't, like I said, why can't that youngster be the mayor of Richmond right there? How can that can't be our future mayor right there? And I just think Richmond would be a better place if. We embrace everybody, but that's it.